Mm -hmm. Hi there, welcome to our D&D stream where we are going to be continuing to paint things and probably doing some gluing today. Um, <clears throat> we print our figures that we paint here on those 3D printers behind us and uh, then paint things like this. Uh, models like this are all 3D printed here. Um, if you want to see where the designs are from, you can go to our website, DysonDungeons.com, under Attributions, and we have all of the different model makers listed there. Um, yeah, and I am going to probably be trying to finish up. Hi, Char. Hi. I'm going to be doing the last little bits on this horse here that I've been working on. We're going to do some gluing today, some epoxying. Um... And then I'll see where we go from there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'm doing I think that's the little intro. spotty thing. We use these uh, prints for our D&D show that streams 2 p.m. Uh, Sundays. Sundays. Be there Sunday, yep. Sunday, Sunday. Got through it. Good announcement. Uh-huh. So I'm just going to finish up this good thing here. Uh, there, are, there are some models that, you know, are kind of fun to paint, and when you're done, you say, oh, let's do another one. This isn't one of those. This isn't one of those. New life stuff? No, just the same old chaotic life stuff, basically. Uh, you know. <laughs> just non-stop. It's always something. Um, so I'm mostly done with this horse. I... I think what I need to do is a little bit of, yeah, I know, chaos is fun. <laughs> um, I'm going to go in really carefully with some black paint and put in a few highlight lines in spots where I think it needs it. But the horse is mostly done. There it is. We'll see. Yeah, and that's not perfect. And I need to finish the hooves. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to glue this bookshelf together in a few different ways. Yeah, the bed. Oh, well, congratulations that you're married now and out of the hospital. I hope the mental health problems get better with time but everything else congratulations yeah congrats it's terrific um so yeah this bookshelf needs to all be glued together the shelves mostly there's probably a dab of glue in the back yeah because um, you don't want it to show and then the lid mm -hmm. um, the lid the, the top of it so, there's this <clears throat> bed with a pillow sheath up on the top. Yep. And the print actually has those things kind of protruding out. But I think they look funny. Should I paint those purple? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, even though that's how it's printed, it looks unkempt. What color should my hooves be? Those are black. Well, right now they're unpainted. Mm. I can make them black officially. If you think that would be good. I think hooves are black. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anything like they can be like a beige, ivory, kind of. Really? I mean, it's a nail. <laughs> Purple. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you could nail polish them. Uh, 
the hoof is basically a nail, though. Good dropping. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for you today. Instead of me. So you don't have to. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. This is just sort of like a little like OCD stuff. Like it really is fine without that. Yeah, I'm basically just doing teeny, tiny little black. I guess they're not technically highlights, but creating some separation in lines where they feel like they should be. They're gonna be pretty subtle and probably not even noticeable on camera. Did you see? That sounds fun. I haven't really been to the movies properly in ages. No. We did some, uh, we were able to rent the theater for like tickets. Dear Evan Hansen, I'm not even familiar with that. But I don't know what anything is that's out right now. Um, yeah, our local movie theater had a, during the midst of, well, we're still in pandemic, but uh, they had a little special deal where for very cheap, you could rent a whole theater and play all an old movie on it. So we did do that once or twice. Um, you know. Yeah, just a small group of people who got to be like 10 feet apart, you know, in the, in the theater. Oh. It sounds pretty heavy, but like a good movie and a good topic. good sounds pretty good if it
<laughs> well. I'm sorry that. Yeah, trouble actually, you know, being able to watch the movie properly, but. I don't know. Well, I'll, ch I'll see if I. Uh, well, I would say. Maybe I'll wait till it comes to streaming, if it does, because I don't really go outside. <laughs> uh, in general. I'm pretty, uh, at home all the time. What are, uh, oh, it only premiered yesterday. So how are, uh, England, UK theaters compared to, I've never been to a theater in the UK. Are they basically the same? Oh, you've never been to a theater in the U.S., so, okay, well. I feel like, let's see. It's expensive popcorn. Uh, expensive tickets. And, uh, I don't know, how would you describe a theater in the U.S.? Uh, dark. Dark. <laughs> Over, overly air-conditioned. Oh yeah, that's uh, they're always really yeah, cold. Really cold. Um, the sound's always way too loud. Yeah, very loud noises. Uh, and a lot of like extreme. I like the cold a lot too, actually. Um, I'm excited that fall is coming, or is here, I should say. Yeah, it's been cold the last few days. Um, but I've been excited about that. But yeah, it's a uh, Theaters are basically just cold places where they sell you extra, extra sweet sugar things. So. Very expensive popcorn. Very, very expensive popcorn. Oh yeah, like... Uh, I don't know how it is in the UK, but it's basically in the theater, it's just rows and rows and rows of seats. Tables and chairs and recliners and the... See, yeah, we're pretty much... Pretty we're much not that. Not that at all. It's, it's like a slightly more comfortable airplane, maybe. I mean, mm. they've started putting recliners in the front parts of theaters now yeah they've been doing that for the last 10 years or so but the uh most of the seats are very much just like uh rows and rows and rows of seats all together there's a very few that have tables on the sides um but those are rare few and far between you can get cup holders yeah, there's cup holders. That counts. <laughs> That's a real amenity. Um, I think we go for volume in America, maybe. Yeah, they've been selling more and more food at these things, but they come in these little cardboard trays that you have to sit on your lap. So yeah, it's not the most comfortable way. To eat. There is a theater in Lansing that has tables, and they actually do, like, you pay, like, extra, extra. And you get to sit at a table, and they actually have someone come and, like, 
bring you food and treat it almost like a restaurant in the theater. But that's like the super high-end ones that are very expensive. Not that the basic ones aren't expensive nowadays. But theaters have been struggling to keep up with streaming here. Between the, the pandemic and streaming, theaters have been having a very, very hard time. Really? See, we've had uh, a lot of theaters used to, and some still do, have arcades uh, built into them. I've never heard of one with a bowling alley. Mm. Yeah, there used to, be, used to be a whole lot more arcade video games. Now there's sometimes a little room tacked onto the side. Mostly. But our, our theaters like to claim that they serve real food, but it's not really real food. No, it's not real food. That's true. I think all this work I've been doing is basically unnoticeable, but I know it's there. Oh yeah, see, we used to have theaters like that with like an actual full-size arcade, basically. Um, that were They were really fun. I had a blast as a kid, but nowadays it's just like... Um, most of the time, if there is one, there's like a little room with like, I don't know, five machines in it. Mm hmm. Maybe an air hockey table. Um, at least, and I don't know if the UK uses arcade differently, but we're talking like arcades here are like video games. Mm hmm. Uh, like the video game boxes in the big room. Well, they do have a claw machine. Do they have a... Yeah, they have a claw machine. I guess that counts, right? Mm-hmm. Um... <laughs> it technically, our theater still has a little arcade section. Yeah. Technically. Yeah, there's, there's an air hockey table and maybe three console games. Uh-huh. Oh, giant piano tile. So, like, on the floor that you step on. Oh, those, that's cool. Those are pretty cool. I don't think I've ever actually seen one in person that I can remember. But, um... Those are pretty cool. They have, like... We'll get, like, the dance ones, like, uh, floor things, like, uh, DDR. But... Not a lot of the, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a piano one in person. Oh, you push them with your hands. Huh. Then I am unfamiliar with it. I was thinking, like, in the movie Big, where it was, like, a big piano on the floor you step on, but there's something I think. Yeah, I mean, it's not, like... I don't think it's proper DDR, I think it's like off-brand DDR, but, you know. It's kind of, they don't, they don't update the arcades very often, so.
there. Uh, they usually have older games like that. Yeah, I think for the PlayStation 2, we had like a home DDR thing and it was on these little like fabric mats that you rolled out that would just slide around everywhere and it was like an extremely dangerous game to play and you'd basically take bets on who got hurt first. <laughs> I am officially done with this. Like you're done with it emotionally? Done or? With this. Like that water wheel thing. That was that was a lot of work to paint that. You see the details they kept showing up, but these spirals are just a real pain. Let's see. This way. Huh. I've never seen anything like that before. Huh. Interesting. It's like a big Guitar Hero kind of yeah. thing with a keyboard. Is it like a rhythm game? Basically? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. What it's going to look like. Not exclude. Oh, uh, bad. Yeah, and then this thing goes in it. In the box. Oh, nice. You have the high score. That's really cool. I don't think I've ever had a high score at any arcade ever. I think it's supposed to go around. Yeah. I think so, yeah. yeah. I could tell by the way, uh... Well, that sounds like a lot. I have no idea how their scoring system is, but... That sounds pretty impressive. I've always been kind of uh, bad at rhythm games anyway. I don't really have rhythm in general. Yeah. Probably our fault. It's probably genetic because neither your mother nor I have any rhythm either. Zero. Oh, you got yeah. Well, that's a lot of uh, points then. Jeez. I always like getting calls about spam calls about like your car is whatever. I'm like, I don't own a car. Yeah, my Apple account keeps getting compromised, but I don't have any Apple devices. Mm, yeah, that's a 
it's always a classic. That's a good one, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just putting the hooves on. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty nice horse. Thanks. Took a while. Yeah, well, you took a lot of care. Paying attention to the wear patterns and shading it. Pretty impressive. So I'm wondering if I should get out uh, the epoxy mixing. Yeah, what all do we have to glue? Other than the bed and the, and the bookcase. Why don't you go see if we have any other projects waiting for glue? In, in glue mint? Whenever uh, Lexi gets a uh, obvious scam call where it's like your whatever, you're like, yeah, like your car's warranty. I haven't spilled any paint yet. Thank you. Whenever Lexi gets one of those calls where it's like your your extended warranty is expiring and it's for something we, you know, it's clearly a spam call. She likes to just be like, when they're like, is this Alexis? She likes to go, oh no, they, they died. And like, then they don't get any, then they don't call back. <laughs> get the number flag to not call back. I did get paint on my finger though. I right, just know. Another bed roll. Oh, we missed one. Yeah. You do love painting those. Mm -hmm. Well, after this bed, I'm not going to complain anymore. Anyway. That's a sword in a scabbard, I think. What is it? No, just a sword. I'm not sure what that other little thing is. It's supposed to be like a little pouch? I think it's like a little pouch. Yeah, I I don't have the like like I I'm way too shy to mess with those sorts of calls. I usually just don't even answer, but unless I know the number. But it is always really funny what people can sort of do and mess with them. I'm gonna call this horse done. I just painted some hooves on it. But I'm not gonna hold it from the bottom. Trying. I'll take some pictures if I can remember for once. Anything? Hooves, <laughs> <Ooh>, sorry. <laughs> I, that's very funny. <laughs> I painted some hooves with an H. Are you just finishing up a couple touches? Yeah, I just saw how it came together. A couple spots that needed. Mm hmm. Okay, horse, you're sitting over here. I'm less likely to hit. And 
knocked it over. Okay, well. Epoxy. I don't need a lot. I'll disassemble this. No, need to get some toothpicks. And the scrap paper. So we're gonna glue some stuff together. I might put a little coat on these big oxes here. The epoxy was leaking. I think you're shifting the camera too. That's not good. Oh, that's good. One of these days we should clean our workspace. Yeah. What we should do is get like a spice rack. <laughs> or yeah, or a dedicated paint rack which you can buy for a bajillion dollars. Wouldn't the spice rack work just as well for like a tiny fraction of the price? Probably. Yeah, little vertical step back shelves. That, uh... Didn't look like it's closed properly. Mm, it's kind of twisted around. Okay, well, that's just a blob of one of these. Because it didn't steal all the way for some reason, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that one. It's a denatured alcohol. Mm hmm. Yeah, maybe that one. Do you want to pour river tiles as well? So in a week, we'll have river tiles. Yeah, we can do some of those. If we're doing messy things, if we're making a mess, we might as well just make a mess. Oh, hello. Or bonjour. With epoxy, it is a glue plus a hardener, just like a Metapod, and it, uh, you mix them together in equal parts, different drying times, uh, depending on the type of epoxy you buy. These are five minute epoxies. Mm -hmm. So they dry in five minutes. There's some that don't dry for like 24 hours or 10 minutes and stuff like that. Um, but this is a good enough window where you can sort of get everything positioned right. And not have to wait. And not have to wait an eternity. And it doesn't need to be any, since they're little figures, it doesn't have to be too terribly long. Strong, I mean. I'm just cleaning it off the tips of the bottles. And this is a bookshelf Lexi painted. Each of these little shelves with all the books on them. One by one. Endlessly. So hopefully we won't screw it up. Are you going the bed first or the bookshelf first? Um doesn't much matter. I could do the bed. Well, you could do the first part of the bed, get the frame together. You know, this is it's one way better than the other. That looks identical. Oh boy. <clears throat> so we're just applying the epoxy with a toothpick here. Um, and carefully placing it where it needs to go to put the feet of the bed on the bed frame. I'm not going to epoxy this thing. You're not epoxying it because it slides in yeah, it's pretty so tightly. It just sits there tightly. Alright. Okay, well, 
that just keeps sliding around. So, so. so maybe stop playing. Ugh. Just bump it with our fingers. Oh, let's make sure to bump it while it's drying so that it gets knocked askew. So these bookshelves sit fairly tightly in here. So what I'm going to do is just put a teeny tiny bit along the back shelf. And I'll slide them in and lock them into place. Is sort of what I'm thinking. Mm hmm Um, so I'll... Push the back? Yeah, I'll just fold it. You can... I'm going to put it... Along the edge. Along the edge and the bottom. The bottom, well, the bottom? Well, I don't, what I mean is along, if I glop it. Oh, air towards the bottom. Yes. Okay, so now that it has glue on it, I will slide it in and pick up the next one. And we don't need much. Once it's all put together, they'll be held in pretty securely. Just from pressure. Shelf number three. And then shelf number four. And now I'll need to do the top. So this just slots on to like that. Mm. So, so we'll just put it on the slots. Yeah. Probably not too terribly much. Airing towards the inside so it doesn't loop out. Press it on, hopefully, if it will. Maybe it goes the other way. And then I'm just gonna fold it in place a little bit. Um, kinda clamp it in while it dries. That'll be dry in about five minutes, and we'll have a nice fancy bookshelf. Although it's not sliding in all the way on one side. Mm. Not sliding in? Not properly. I think... How tacky was it when you put it in? Not very. Okay, this side is not... Willingly going. Did it before? Yeah. You need like a rubber band to hold it? Yeah, do we have a rubber band? Maybe. Or a clamp? I think a rubber band would be better so it doesn't scrape. And this is on the fly problem solving. Maybe two if you have them. One for each side. Do you have a second one? I do. Thank you. Take two rubber bands. And 
know. It'll be nicely compressed while it dries. And hardens. Alright. How oh, is your bed? It's a very fancy bed. Mm-hmm. Alright. You wanna do more goop? Do more goop. Water. Oh, well. I got a bunch more pipes. While you're getting those, I'm gonna take a picture of my horse before I forget. And Lexi yells at me for not sending him. picture sent. I am safe. So I have a bunch of old tins that we'll use to catch. I'm thinking... And we have a spill? Mm, yeah, just get the river tiles out so that paint doesn't get messed up. I didn't spill. I did not cause this spell. <laughs> Hi, Katie. Space Ghost says. Hi, Shane. Remember the famous Space Ghost line about that? Sorry, I was cleaning up the water. What did you say? The Space Ghost line. That is not my problem. Oh, this is definitely your funnel. Mm -hmm. On the rim. Alright. Um, so what I'm thinking, if we have some cardstock, maybe we could get a nice seal. Better than the tape? I don't know if that would work. Maybe at least use, like, a duct tape or something, more waterproof. Than the yeah, we could stamp. do that. I mean, we have to cut it off anyway. Mm hmm. How many of those will sit in there? Three. Two. Two, maybe. Yeah. You can sort of kind of fit three. But realistically, two. All right. So what we're going to be doing here is um, taking these river tiles that we painted and in this um, water part, we're going to be pouring realistic water, which we tested on a previous piece and it does harden eventually. So we're going to start using it. It'll take about, honestly, it, it says 24 hours, but it's really more like 36 to a week. It's a long time. It takes a good long time. So, we have a bunch of old rusted pie tins that we don't care about to hold the, in case there's a spill. Um, you know, ideally there won't be, but you never know. And then we're going to take some <laughs> duct tape, uh, which is a bit more waterproof than painter's tape. And try to get a nice seal on the ends so we don't just have all of what we're pouring go out the side. It's also very adhesive. And that's because it's fabric. Right? Mm -hmm. So, 
We're gonna take some of the spec tape. Put it all along the side. And I'm actually gonna wrap it underneath slightly. Sure. Um, to create, ideally, a pretty solid seal. We'll see. It might be more of a sea lion when we're done. I mean, the worst that will happen is we'll get the exacto knives out and cut it off. Mm hmm. That was a CLC lion joke. So, creating this little barrier here, like so. And just making sure the tape is nice and tightly fitted on the model. And if it does spill, which hopefully it won't, it's mostly just a matter of avoiding wastage. Um, because if it spills into these pans, we really don't care. Orange handled, orange handled scissors. It might be out in the other room. Oh, here it is. It's actually bad. Red handled scissors. In right there instead of in the other room. But this will be exciting because when we do our D and D stream. Oh, we'll thank you. Yeah. On the stream. If, whenever we fight by a river in the future on the stream, we'll actually have a river. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, we, we enjoy making things like this. Okay, so we have one theoretically sealed set of corners. I'll move them down like a conveyor belt or something. And... This stuff is really a pain. Dude. Yeah. It'd be a bit unwieldy if we didn't cut it in half, though. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it'll work better. Um... And this is still drying, but hopefully this will come in together pretty well. Just holding it all together with rubber bands right now. Um, yeah. So, we have a piece. Great. I can get back to it. Two pieces. Right, they come in pairs. <laughs> they can. I'll have to run up and grab the finished one while you're cutting pieces off. Mm hmm And that way we can see what we're going towards. I'm gonna be right back. When we're all said and done, Much better. you know, I would like to do that. I think at some point, yeah, get extra camera here. Yeah. One thing I would actually like is to somehow suspend a camera off the ceiling, pointing straight down at the table. Because that would require a fair amount of engineering. <laughs> 
and an anti-gravity machine. This is what we're eventually working towards, so... This is what the realistic water looks like hardened. <laughs> it's very shiny. Um, but you can still see the blue and white that I painted underneath. So, when it's all said and done, we'll be able to make a nice big uh, river. Yeah, we were really worried the realistic water wouldn't actually harden. But yeah, it did. And it didn't after a while. It took a good while. Um, I'm wondering if it'd be possible to engineer, since this is a fairly light camera over here that we're using, a way to suspend that off the ceiling so that it's sort of an equal view on the countertop without being disorienting. We are in the basement, so we have exposed beams above us, which might make that a little easier. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of things to screw and nail into. I need one more set for over here. Is that them? Okay, I thought you were assigning them to... No, I was just hanging them on something. <laughs> oh, I see. What we need are to paint teeny tiny little fish. Yeah, and just really let them do. float in the river. But we have to have different kinds of fish that we would paint realistically as. Yeah. yeah. Like a, well, it's a river, so maybe like trout. trout. Maybe a salmon. A pike, perhaps? No. Is that, really? is that more lake? Yeah, these are lakes. I thought they liked anywhere with uh, a lot of algae or a lot of uh, weeds. weeds. Yeah. Usually streams don't have a lot of weeds. Anyway, yeah, we could do uh, like a whole salmon run. <laughs> Just one tile loaded with salmon, <laughs> the rest are empty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And during the show we would move that one to show how the salmon are swimming. Uh-huh. Yeah, because we'll have a fishing episode. And we're chasing... Yeah, exactly. It's a big fish, magical fish party. <laughs> They're all in school together. Mm -hmm. All right. Slide those down and. Oh, out this one. And we have a loud cat meowing somewhere. Off. So, I think our goal with the magical, not magical, the with magic the water. realistic water, other than getting tapes stuck together, there we go, is only like, what, a millimeter? Yeah, really thin. Like, kind of um, like an eighth of an inch last time. And it was just too thick, it wouldn't dry. Um, and it ran out the edges. And it ran out the sides. So, I think if we aim for like a millimeter just to get a nice coat. Mm -hmm. And then if we ever want it deeper, we can add more once it's dry and sort of build up layers. Um, just trying to be very thorough in the tamping down of the tape to minimize spill. Village. Or you could get like a little tentacle and just have a single like tentacle rising up. Mm -hmm. There's lots of things we could do that we won't. So, we could 
the main thing of putting these together again is making sure the tape doesn't adhere to one another. Because <laughs> they're kind of in tight quarters. And I want them to lay flat. So they can't really sit directly side by side. Because any inconsistency in how it's laying will lead to an inconsistency in how it sits and dries in the in the river itself. And a little, like a degree here or there, isn't really going to make a difference. But, um... It's not going to be a noticeable difference, at least, but if it's... <laughs> on its side, basically. It'll be pretty noticeable. Alright, and I'm going to be on my last river tile shortly here. Alright. One, two, get sealed underneath. This is awesome. With the overhang, there's only so much maneuvering that can be done without them no. causing problems and sticking to each other. I think it was fine. Mm -hmm. It's just the pan is a little uneven. Yeah, the pan was kind of bowed in the middle. So should we just set these pans here and pour it in, rather than moving it after we pour it? Well, no, because we want to pour them on camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would okay. say yes, but... But, but yeah, the drama... We're of, doing... The, the drama of the... Of the pour. Guaranteed one of us screwing up. Somehow making a mess. And somehow making a giant mess. Is a little, a little too exciting, I think. So, do you want to pour the water, the realistic water, out, or do you want to just spread it around with a stick? I think, I think a mix of both. I don't think we can spread it from that model without making a humongous mess. Because if mm -hmm. you remember, it's fairly liquidy. Yeah, I just mean when you get it in, just spread it. Um, I think in the corners. we'll pour it in, and if it's not going into the corners, we'll spread it. Okay. So, do you want to be the libel one? Yeah, let me mess it up. Okay. Do not shake. Never ever shake realistic water. Mm -mm. Apparently. I'm gonna stand up in case I need to grab something I'm in a hurry. Well, the raised edge of the pie tin makes it a little bit. A little difficult to pour. Alright, that's moving on its own. And it smells kind of weird. Yeah, so no shaking, but it can be stirred. Right. Yeah, they, well, it can be prodded. Prodded lightly. It might not hurt to put a tiny bit more in each one. Well, no, it's pretty thick. It just needs to be spread. Uh, I'm gonna spread that down that way. 
and then I'll hold it up for the camera before moving it out. The main thing is trying to not get it on the banks. Mm hmm. So we don't want glossy banks. Yeah, so when this one gets set down, nah, you might want that end up a little bit. Yeah, it seems to favor this side. So. Yeah, so you can just put like so a that's sheet of paper under it. What it looks like wet. There's a shim. Mm-hmm. Well, we have to put three more there. Make sure there's room. Right. Okay. All right. So now we're going to do some bendy Ooh. bits. We did one without any immediately visible horrible problems. And this will need maybe two-thirds of what the other one's done. I feel like the duct tape's already doing a better job. Oh, you're about to go over. So that one's less level then. And luckily, these don't need to be ultra precise, um, like some things. But I think these are going to look pretty nice for 3D printed uh, rivers we made ourselves here at home. Mm -hmm. You know, the ridges on these are really high. So sometimes the realistic water has trouble getting up and over. Mm -hmm. um, and who knows, maybe in a week two. or more, we'll have a fight by a river. And you'll get to see these on the table on our D&D &D show, which is on... Sundays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sunday, be there. It's like in the old... Uh... These all need a while to dry, though. Yeah, these take really two full weeks. To be properly dry. It's, it's a pretty good product, though. It's made for train sets. Um... There's a little spillage. On the side of the bottle. Well, yeah, it's stuck to the rim. Um, oh, the bottle's going to be sticky for a while, and then it'll be glossy. Yeah, maybe this will work well with, like, a couple of layers. Do you want to do that one with another layer? N no, I'll leave it for now. See how it all looks together, and then we'll make a decision with Lexi. Mm-hmm. But I think it's, uh, they do say on the bottle that um, building it up in layers is the way to go. But yeah, this is another thing designed for train sets. Um, train sets can be a surprisingly good way to find things at D&D &D scale for very cheap. Um, namely things like trees, bushes, hedges. Um, there's a lot of flock-based uh, products for train sets, um, you know, you could even do lamp posts. They make lamp posts with LEDs. And no, they're not the highest quality in the world, but it can be a very e economic um, way to get certain things at uh, D 
D&D close to the D&D scale for very little money. Um, on the show, we use train set trees that we printed new bases for. And now we are using realistic water, which is made for train set uh, environments. Actually, train set paints usually are also really good. We haven't really used those because we have the colors we need. But um, the metallics, there used to be this thing called flow quill. Oh yeah, you love that. Metallics that were really good. Um, but they turned out to be like super poisonous. And if anybody painted more than a tiny little dot, they had to have a respirator and things. So. Now they're off the market. You, you can sometimes get them like on a secondary market. Maybe eBay, some other places. But you should go for the non-toxic options. If you're going to try painting yourself. So if you have unopened bottles of Flow Quill Metallics laying around, you can get quite a premium for them. On the this, black market. On the, on the uh, so kill you, don't use it black market. Flow Quill, only used by Russian assassins nowadays. Right? Mm. They were really good though. Although these uh, Viejo Metallics are, are pretty decent. I do like the Viejo Metallics. So there's our last one. It's still very wet and it will continue to be very wet for, for a week. And then it'll be slightly sticky for another week. Um, the next thing we should do is take some paper and just put it over the top to catch dust from... Yes. There's um, a... A little stack of paper over here. Yep. And so, then after that, we should we should find a lid to the bottle. Oh, there it is. So, so we haven't used very much of that. No, we could do an <laughs> ocean. Yeah. With how much better it. part of a lake. The main thing is I don't want the paper to uh, collapse into the water, obviously. But I want to just have something over the top of it to prevent dust from falling in while it's drying. Um, while staying relatively ventilated. Luckily, there aren't like a million health and safety warnings on the realistic water, like most chemicals that you might use. Because I think it's just a resin, effectively. A neutral resin. But there's some things like the... Uh, some, like, model putty. That basically it's like, well... We strongly recommend you never open this around, like, living mm -hmm. entities. Alright, so I think... Does that look okay? Yeah, yeah that works good. With the tape over the top of it, it should be okay. Yeah, the... Inhalation yeah. of this, which I won't show you because it's a branded thing. <laughs> Inhalation of vapors may cause certain central nervous system effects. Characterized by nausea, headache, dizziness, unconsciousness, and under certain conditions of overexposure, even death. No, oh, so you have to you can't breathe it. Just never ever breathe around this thing. So I bought a different one that's made that's water based and a lot less deadly. Yeah, which doesn't have any like if you breathe this, you'll go into convulsions. So I think now that that big goo process is done, the horse looks really good. Thank you. Nicely done. There's yeah. only three more of them. <laughs> yeah, we have three more of these armored horses, but mm -hmm. here's one of them. Pretty much all done. <laughs> so, to give myself a break from horses... You want to paint a bedroll? Oh, gonna, you're going to paint an ox. I, gonna, I have these two oxes that we purchased. Awesome. Um, 
These were not printed because we do not yet have a resin printer. We would like to get one, but it's a huge headache to actually run one safely. And, and there's a bed. Is it dry? Yeah, it's not falling apart. So there's a very fancy four poster van that we did 3D print that. Mm hmm. Um, so let's see for oxes. O oxen? Oxes? Oxen. Um, let's see what colors they are. We got brown, 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 black, brown, brown and black, reddish brown, dark brown. So I think somewhere in the black to reddish brown range should these axes be different colors. Yes, but not very much. Then I'm going to... You think they should be similar colors, like a, two different shades well, of brown? it could be a pair. I know, could do a, a cart. black and a brown. Mm -hmm. Should I do black and brown? Yes, black and brown. Black and brown. I vote for black and brown. Now, the key with black is that black in nature is extremely rare and basically only exists in, like, birds and... A couple like reptiles I think um, most of the time when you see something that's black it's actually like an extremely dark brown or blue or um, something similar mm -hmm. um, like true black black is pretty rare so what I think I'll probably do is take something like this dark gray or the maybe even a dark dark blue but i think gray yeah we've used the sea blue with a black wash before and that's worked pretty well yeah but the dark gray so i'm actually gonna take i think i'll take this dark gray and i'm gonna put it over most of this ox it has some fur at the top i'll probably do in a lighter gray and then it'll get a black wash over it and probably some black detailing with a proper paint. Um, but like all new projects, the big thing will be doing a base coat. And that is always a little messy and something I like to get through fairly quickly because it's kind of boring. So, I'm just gonna, luckily, with the oxen, they're pretty much one color. There's not a lot of detail, there's not armor on them, and equipment all over the place, and all that annoying stuff. So, I can go fairly quick. Things like the ground are gonna get painted a different color. So I don't have to worry too much about accidentally getting a spot down there. Um, that's why I'm using a, slit, a larger brush too, so I can just get coverage of area. Um, and I'll probably need to wait quite a while for the base coat to dry properly. Because once you start doing detail, you don't want even a tacky surface. Um, that's been something I get impatient about and have to deal with. And then it causes all sorts of problems down the line. So... Get up and under the tail here. And down the legs. And what are you working on? Why don't you tell everyone? Um, this bedroll that I found. They had an extra I haven't bedroll. painted bedrolls in a while. Dad painted all the bedrolls that we've used on the show and is 
a little grumpy about it. Yeah, they were okay. There were one or two that were kind of annoying, but... That? They're done. Yeah. So I'm just painting the the bedroll is folded over. So that's the inside of it. I'm painting that a lighter color than the outside. But first I'm going to paint what color should I make the pillow thing? Maybe just a buff or something. Do you remember what color I painted all the ground around it? Uh it might have been flat earth. They're all back on the shelves. Like Sam and I took a good while today cleaning up the studio and getting everything back on the shelves so that we could actually. So I'm gonna go. Well, that's not the next thing I'm doing anyway. I'm painting the uh, little pouch. See the hilt. The handle probably should be like a really dark. The steel is pretty good. I think that's yeah, here. I meant the... Oh, the... Pommel? Mm -hmm. Do the handle in um, leather brown. I'm just twisting this around a lot to make sure I'm not missing any spots. Um... As I go up over the head here. And this is the real quick and dirty part. Uh, getting a model ready to be painted. I'm not worrying too much about the fur. I'm just going up and in, into it slightly. Because um, I'm going to be doing that in a different color. To sort of set a different look. Because um, as this furry back... I want to make sure the ears and nose and everything properly get painted. I find once I get the base coat on and it's dry, I have a massively easier time figuring out what I'm doing. And something I've sort of learned with this brand of figure that I'm using, because this was a purchased one, is that when you're putting the base coat on especially, as it dries, it tends to sort of... Basically, these come pre-primed, and it's not the best primer. Um, so when they dry, sometimes you find little spots where the paint didn't adhere to properly. Um, so... As I am finishing up getting the base coat on, I am also twisting it around a lot and checking for spots where a little bit of the primer is showing through because it's just not adhering with the paint the way I want it to. Um, this won't be a problem long term when I have a good coat of paint over it, um, because it will uh, adhere to the base coat that I put on. But whoop. also, it's like really, really delicate. So if you accidentally touch it, it just strips the paint right off. Hmm. I don't know what it is whether with this brand um whether it's the primer the material but there's the skin or hide base coat of this bison ox oh. isn't an ox a type of bison though no i mean in the sense that ox and cows and bison are all kind of related no it's buffalo that are a type of bison no 
Yeah, a buffalo is a variety of bison. Pretty sure. I watched a lot of Animal Planet. Now we're having an animal. Okay, so we're both sort of right. There are old world true buffalo, like the Cape and Water Buffalo in Africa and Asia. But the things we call buffalo here in America are actually bison. Which are not related to buffalo. And they're not related to the actual family buffalo. So. What we here in America call buffalo are not. are not actually buffalo, but there are buffalo that are separate and distinct from. And I'm going to do for this other buffalo, this red brown was my base, and then give it like a darker brown um, fur on top. That's a good color for him. Oh, ox. Ox. These are ox. This is going to be like the crypt all over again, where I'm calling it like a crypt, a mausoleum, and a, uh, some other one. What Sarcophagus. else? Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus, all interchangeably. Going along on my brown ox. I'm painting these, trying to not cause problems for myself in the future, but it will be inevitable. Yeah, I'm not in love with whatever they use as primer for these figures. Um, just doesn't really adhere the paint on quite as well as I would like. Um. Cleaning the paint off of the uh, 
rim of the bottle. As it builds up over time and then keeps the bottle from stealing. I'm trying to do that. Which is a bad thing. By both not getting dried paint into the bottle or letting the bottle loose and letting it spill. Uh huh. So far, I almost let it spill once. And one thing I'm trying to make sure I do is get all the legs covered because it's easy to miss like a little like inner thigh or back of a forelimb with a piece like this. No. Huh? Here's a red brown uh, box. Yeah. That's gonna be good color. Yeah. I'm leaving the hair and the fur on top and the horns. Unattended. The horns I'll do in ivory, which we luckily got more of. Um, and the fur, I'm going to do a darker brown and then either a black or a dark, dark blue on the fur on the black. Uh, hot. We'll see. Okay, that brush cleaned off. Um, reduce the sheer amount of paint I have on my hands before I handle anything. So, do you think this is done? Oh yeah. Right. And I remove the uh, rubber bands from the bookshelf and shoot it across the room. And see how well they've dried. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna like yank it because it will probably break if I do. But we have a glued in bookshelf that is no longer falling apart whenever I move it. A very nice bookshelf painted by Lexi. Painstakingly painting all of the books and all the books that you can basically barely see behind them. Um, and making a very nice overall piece. So, oh, that'll be good on our, with our uh, doodad shelf. Which is what I call like all of our crates, boxes, shelves, everything like that. So it's a bed for now. And these ox will need a minute to dry, and then I'll probably have to give them another coat in some areas. Um, so, in the meantime, what happened to we moved our big box of things <laughs> over there? Well, I'm going to change the 3D printers quick while Dad tells you all about what he's working on. I am painting the bedroll, that darker blue color, around the little pouch and dagger. With this tiny little brush. And after I'm done with that, then I will get a larger brush and paint out the rest of the area. This, this works really well because those things are raised up over the surface so there's a gap underneath them that needed to be painted in and then it paints up to it. This tiny brush gets the paint underneath into that gap.
There's not much uh, left in there. What? But there's not much left in there. In where? In the box of things. Yeah. Maybe I'll punish myself with another horse. No, no. This is an extra fancy horse, fancier than the one I just did. But it doesn't have armor. But it has a lot of, like, embellishments on it. Like trappings and things. Little, like, cloths hanging off of the, uh, reins, things like that. Um, but this isn't a perfect print. Um, the resin on it still has a couple of the support structures attached to it, so... The very first thing I do is going to be take a set of pliers and an exacto knife and make sure all of the pieces are uh, clean and off it and give it a good thorough inspection. So one immediate one I can see, and I don't know how visible it'll be when it's all black, but under the reins here, Underneath the reins, there's a small support structure piece right, right in here. And that's just going to cause all sorts of problems painting because it's just this extra little stick about that big, very tiny, that, uh, Um, would just get in the way of the brush and stop you from uh, painting the area that needs to be painted. So I'm going to give this a fairly thorough once over and see if there's any more uh, remnant support structures on this horsey. Um, like here is just a loose thread sort of, which isn't really a big deal at all, but it could catch paint or adhere to it and leave a weird black eyelash sort of looking piece to it. So I'll just take some pliers and try and get a hold of it. Maybe just my fingers actually. Your tweezers? Oh, I got it. So, what we have here is a very fancy parade horse as like a quilted saddle. So, I'm trying to think what color is the horse. So I'm going to start with the fur, like I did on these ox over here. What color do you think this horse is? Is it a white horse? Is it a brown horse like that one? Mm. Is it a dark brown horse like the ox here? This red brown? No, a gray horse. A gray horse. Maybe with some oppo, op, 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 loose of, spots. Know, spots on it. That will be a huge pain to do with all the stuff on it. Well, no, just gray. A nice, <laughs> a nice gray horse. A nice gray horse. All right. I'm going to do the neutral gray instead of the dark gray for this. Um, so it's a more of a gray gray horse. And, you know, I'm not going to be too obsessed with making sure I don't get onto everything. But I'm going to, there's a lot of little gaps and spots all over um, this horse. So I am going to, you know, try and take my time, even though it's a base coat, and reduce the sheer amount of spillover that there might be because it's a complicated model. At least I now know what the little part in front on the horse is, which is a ring with three straps coming together on it. Um, 
I couldn't tell on the previous model until I had already painted half of it. That was fun to uh, clarify on the on the fly. And the horse will look pretty weird until I at least get all the base coat in. But you can see as I put in even just one leg here, it really starts to define the shape a lot better than this sort of amorphous uh, black primed figure that I'm currently looking at. And that not only helps people watching see, but it also helps me see what I'm doing as I start to define some of the color blocks that make up this figure. Um. And I'm going to, like the last horse, do the hooves last. So I do not have to worry about handling it by the feet nearly as much. Um, but I am not using a large brush like I did for the ox to cover this, just because there's not the same sort of large areas that I can fill in quickly. Getting the underside of the horse is always a little difficult because of the way the legs get in the way of brush angles. So, have to be a little conscientious of that as I get the inner legs, which is something that's easy to miss. You always want to triple check where you've been. So I have the Front two legs, braid. Looks like it's wearing pants on its front legs. Um, and I put a little dot in the chest in for where the center of the ring is. Because that will sort of show through. And next, I'm going to be putting on the neck and head portion. And this has a fairly, well, bridles are complicated in general. So it's not a complicated bridle, but it is a bridle that is by definition, by complicated. definition complicated. And this will all get, I'm mostly trying to make sure I get the lower points, which is the, the lowest points, which will be the horse, all painted up properly, um, and knowing that any little bits of the bridle I accidentally splash onto are going to get painted over later. Um, with whatever color I end up choosing for the bridle. I want to make sure I get up on the ears and get those nicely Coated. And it's small things that are actually can actually be really noticeable. Like pretty much everyone has either seen a horse in person or at the very least has seen horses on TV or in movies and stuff. So everyone actually has a good idea of what a horse should look like. And if you uh, diverge from that too much, you can actually, like, people will notice something's wrong even if they can't point out specifically what is wrong with it. So, 
This head is a little messy, just because of how much there is. But I really need to just get that base coat in. So I've got... I've got the dagger done and the pillow and the base coat in on the rest. I'm going to use a blue wash on that, but it has to dry. So in the meantime, I'm going to investigate what color of ground I had done on the other bed roll. Okay, so here's a front half of the horse with a really simple gray base coat. Um, just double checking, make sure I didn't miss anywhere that I wasn't trying to miss. Yep, and I knew there would be a spot or two. There's one here on the neck, on the inside of the reins, which are kind of a huge pain. pain. Alright. Now that the front has horsey gray on it, there's a little section of belly underneath between all of the cloth and leather straps and things like that that make up the gear this horse is wearing. So I just want to splash some on that and then very carefully kind of holding on the saddle I'm gonna try and do the uh, back or back half of the horse the horse's butt um, I'm gonna start on the bottom because that's a little bit more of a pain especially once the rest of it is painted Work my way down some of the legs. Make sure to get the paint spread fairly evenly across. Get under the tail, which is going to be another difficult place to paint. Um, basically, whenever you have on a model like these sort of overhanging pieces, and you have to get up and under them. It can present a bit of a challenge um, to paint. And hopefully the front half of the horse will be dry-ish fairly quickly. Um, I don't make too many uh, fingerprints or anything that I have to amend later. I'm thinking the mane and tail on a gray horse is going to be black. For some reason, I feel like yeah. that's a normal thing to see. I think that would be a good combination. Um. Okay, that leg part is done, so now I move on to the other leg. Get up and in underneath. There's some of this hanging fabric that has these... I don't, I don't think crenellations is the right word, but that's the word I have for it. The sort of toothy um, shape to them. And I want to make sure the fur is visible underneath where those come up. And then on the butt of the horse, the horse butt, there's actually a little spot that's visible around the tail. It has some leather running underneath the tail. So, I believe that is the sloppy base gray of the horse. It's a lot more visible as a horse now. And there's a big mess of layers of cloth in the middle section of it. So, I'm going to set that not on my 
paper towel, which I will shuffle around accidentally. Close up my gray and check in on my oxes. Oxen. Oxes? Oxen. English is hard sometimes. <laughs> um. Make sure my hands are not sticky with paint. And get my brush nice and clean. Alright. Oh, you got it. That one, that didn't take too long. No, it's coming along really well. There isn't too much weirdness on it, just the knife and the polish. So, looking over my ox here, I can see on the legs it's still a little wet. And there's a couple spots that have flaked slightly. So, what I'm going to do is take my dark gray again. And apparently this is like all I do lately is animals. I'm really looking forward to when that dungeon tile set is finished and I can just go really rapidly through a whole lot of pieces. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of uh, gray. Yeah, we might have to uh, buy more gray. Uh, yeah, or whatever new, color we new, end up using. Neutral gray, I think. Mm. So I'm just doing a little touch up on the base coat for this ox where the paint didn't really adhere as much as I would like. Like on the tip of the ear here and a little around the legs. Um, I'm pulling out the uh, blue wash, blue gray to wash the uh, folded, well, basically the bed one, especially the folded over part. All right. And then by then, flat earth, you know, might be dry. Might be dry, and then I can pull out the umber wash and finish that, and then it'll be done. Hmm. And now I'm going to check my red brown ox. Because that horse will take a minute to dry, there's just so many little crevices. Um, and that's the danger of picking it up. See, I barely touched this ox, but there was a slightly wet spot and it pulled a whole section of paint off of it. Like, and there's like all this stuff in front where the paint just flaked off. I really don't like the primer that they use on, on these figures. Um, I'm assuming it's a very cheap primer that only sort of works. So, the good thing I'm coming in to do touch up anyway, because I can touch up those spots. So like, I painted this face and there's like a whole section on the head, forehead that's just gone. It just didn't adhere. Um, well, I mean, look at that. Wow. It's, it, it's really pretty bad. So, let's just reprime them next time. Yeah, I should probably just put a whole new layer of primer over the current one. Um, rather than use them with their so-called priming. Um, it's just like, ugh, how is that acceptable? Maybe they just assume people are going to reprime it right off the bat anyway. But why bother priming it at all then? The blue rolled onto the pillow will have to be painted off a little bit when that dries. It's going to take a while to dry. All right. So. Is there any other spot that we're missing a little? Here, it's a little thin here. All right. Red brown ox is on the ground again. Letting that dry. So I'm going to seal up my paint here. Um, we're hitting right around 5 o'clock.
And I'm pretty much, I think I'm at a stage where I want to let things dry. Um, I find if you put on a base coat and it's very wet or even slightly wet, when you're trying to tackle things on top of that base coat, you're just asking for trouble. Um, and I know it's not that exciting for a show, but are you doing an umber wash? Mm hmm. Oh, you should have said something. I had a little here. No, no, I just used mine up. Oh, you can use what's left in there. I will. That was for finishing up my horsey here. There was a little spot. So I'm pretty happy with my horse. You know, there's spots I wish were better. There's spots that I'm surprised I got through. But. So maybe, maybe we'll get a horse in this next episode. Probably not. Mm -hmm. Well, and this bed roll's almost done. I just need to touch up the pillow again. That went pretty well. I mean, it went, yeah. Surprisingly smoothly. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're at a stage where things just need to dry across the board. We have rivers drying. We have horses drying. We have oxes drying. We have bed rolls drying. Um, so, oh. since we're just at about five o'clock, and this seems like a relatively good stopping point, um, so that we can have dinner, I think we're going to call it there. Yeah. Thank you so Thanks much to all the people who showed up yeah, and chatted and everything like that. It was great having you all here. Um, we'll be... Next time we'll see you, well, sort of, is next time we'll be painting is Tuesday. Yep. Um, I, I'll I'm, probably be painting alone. You're going to visit your brother. Yep, I'll be gone next week. So, you'll be gone, yeah. Tuesday and tu Friday. Tuesday and Friday. But we will be vis on this Sunday and the following Sunday for our normal D&D &D show, which is at 2 p.m. Eastern. And, I don't know, maybe we'll fight a giant scorpion in our, or a river or something. <laughs> yeah, fight a river. <laughs> fight a river. Um, <laughs> we, will swim anyway. up, we will be swimming upstream. Yep, fighting a giant scorpion. And a, giant scorpion. And a jaguar. And a horse. And a horse. <laughs> we'll be on the horse. Okay. All right. We will, the jaguar is beautiful. Oh, thanks. An amazing job with that. We will see you all on Sunday then, hopefully. Thanks for coming by. Please do join us if you can. And, uh, yeah. Have a great day. Have a good Friday. Bye.